Well, good morning, Monica Stenberg here, and it is my absolute delight to be joining you this morning. Good Friday is today. It's the day where we as believers are remembering the price that our Lord paid for us. Jesus, the Son of God, having come from heaven to to earth to live a sinless life, lay down his life for us on the cross. And I have a few things to share with you, but I'll tell you, there's so much in the Word of God. We have only a few moments, so I'm going to make this very concise, but I want to ask you and I want to uh, encourage you and in fact exhort you to open your Bibles for yourself. When we're done, make some time. Open the scriptures, the gospels, and begin to read through the story of how Jesus became our Passover lamb and fulfilled all that he promised to do. You know, this morning what I want to share with you is that Jesus fulfilled the words that he released to us. You know, the Bible says in John that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It goes on to tell us that nothing was created without him. Jesus with the father came up with a plan to redeem mankind long before he came and actually do it, did it. I tell you, this is exciting because verse 14 of John says this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of that of the only begotten son. Listen, Jesus came in fulfillment of the plan of God. And so today what I want to point out to you is that God sent his word in advance. He has heralded the plan and then Jesus came and he fulfilled the plan. The plan of God will be accomplished. Our responsibility as believers is to turn our attention to the word of God which is Jesus. You know, he reveals himself through the scripture. So I'm this morning if Nothing else, I want to tell you that the Lord is calling you to return to his word and let him walk you through what happened that fateful day. We only have a few moments together. So as much as I would like to walk you through the the pages of the truth of what Jesus did on the original Good Friday, the Passover of all Passovers, the one where he gave his life... I hear the Holy Spirit saying, come away with me and I will walk you through that day. The Lord Jesus himself wants to meet you in the word of God and tell you what he needs to tell you. I'm telling you the passages of scripture will come alive for you. So what I'm here to share with you today is the reality and the encouragement that the word of God is waiting for you to speak to you. You know, even that night, Jesus kept saying at least nine or ten times within the the night of his giving his life, he makes a reference of saying that the scriptures might be fulfilled or so that as it was written. You know, I never noticed that as much as I did yesterday as I walked through Matthew 26. I would encourage you to do the same thing. Reading the, the story, the true life story of what Jesus did. I noticed that he kept saying, as the scriptures say, or as it is written, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. This is really important for us to notice because it reminds us that all those things that occurred, occurred because God had a plan. Nothing came out of left field. In fact, God is aware of everything and he has a plan. And Jesus came into agreement with God long before he got here and decided that he was going to fulfill the purpose. Now, we know that that night came and the the humanity side of Jesus had to commit to the plan and walk it out. And that's not easy. That's why we celebrate and we are so thankful for the price that he paid. It was a heavy price. He paid a strong price for us to buy us, to redeem us. He could not live without us. He knew that from the beginning because he loved us so much that he declared, I will come for you. And he did all through the scriptures. I mean, I want to encourage you. Look at the Old Testament. Hear what was said and see how Jesus fulfills the word. You know, 
as tempting as it is to want to walk through the passages of that night, my sense this morning with you is again to encourage you to turn and open your scriptures and let the Lord walk you through and see if you don't notice how every detail of that day was exactly how the word said it would be. Again, he kept pointing out, it's like this. He tells the, his disciples that this night you're, you're all going to scatter that the scripture might be fulfilled, that I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. He's letting them know, listen, I know what's going to happen and it needs to go down this way. Even Judas being the one who came and betrayed him with a kiss. You know, it was, it was prophesied so long before that, that he would be betrayed by his, his own friend, his companion, the scripture says. And that is how it went down over and over again. We see through the story of his sacrifice for us that it happened the way he said it would happen. So I encourage you again, strongly open your word and let the lamb himself walk you through what he accomplished for you in these days. You know, in, in these last few minutes, I want to take this opportunity to open up something that was said. Passage of scripture, approximately 700 years or so before Jesus ever got here. Again, the Lord Jesus sent the word through prophets and they spoke words and then he came and fulfilled them. You know, this is amazing news for us because God speaks and then he fulfills and he still speaks through his word and he still fulfills. So this morning, as we remember what Jesus did for us, let's go back to what was written long before he came and fulfilled it. And let's not Ask ourselves, Lord, let's ask ourselves and notice how he did exactly what was written. Isaiah 53. This is from the New Living Translation. I just want to share a few passages out of this chapter as we remember in these few minutes we have together that Jesus fulfilled the plan of God to redeem us. Isaiah 53 says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. Listen, this is laying out that the servant of God, the Messiah would come and he wouldn't be a king in a king's palace. He wouldn't be famous and things that people think draw. You know, we think that being a basketball star or a movie star, different things. See, we think that's what draws people to us. But we're actually learning in this season of lockdown that that isn't what draws us. You know, those things fade away. Jesus, the Son of God, he didn't have those things. He was the servant of God. And after all these years, whether people believe in him or don't, we're all aware of who he is. He is still drawing men to him. Verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. Listen. Did you hear that? Long before, 700 years or so before he got here and actually carried our sins, the word of God declared that this would be the case. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. Oh, this is glorious news. This is what we remember when we see what happened on that cross. When we give attention to this day, to the scriptures, to the truth of what actually occurred in history. This actually happened. It's not a story like a fairy tale. It is a factual account of a historical event that, by the way, was planned before the foundations of time, was written about in the word of God repeatedly. Repeatedly. But yet God fulfilled it. Boy, I tell you, this is good news. We need to realize that our God knows what he's doing and he accomplishes his plan. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. So many of you 
feel broken and shattered in so many places. And the scriptures tell us exactly what happened. He was crushed so you don't have to be, so that you can be whole. So be whole today. Be whole today. He fulfilled these things for us. He was whipped so that we could be healed. Healing is part of what he provided on that cross. The reason that he received the scourging, the, the, the whip marks in the scriptures, in the gospel, it says, and they scourged him. That scourging is those beating and the marks. We, we hear phrases, we say things like, as is a quote from Peter, by his stripes we were healed. It's this, it's the beating so that we could be healed. Jesus planned that. They wanted this. See, before it began, it didn't just happen to him. He laid his life down. It was the plan of God. It was his pleasure and his pain. Okay, he was acquainted with sorrow and grief. He chose it for us to redeem us. I'll tell you, this is the day that it all changed. It was the day that God fulfilled his plan to redeem us. And let me, let's go on here and look at what was written over 700 years or so before Jesus came and fulfilled it. Uh, verse 6, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short midstream, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people, says the Lord. He had done no wrong, had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. All these things occurred. As you go back and read the factual account of the crucifixion, you'll see he was buried like a criminal means he was put on a cross. Only criminals were put on a cross. He died this way like a criminal. But in the end, the story, as the story tells us that Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, took him, put him in a rich man's grave. He was put in a rich man's grave. Every detail of what occurred that day was by design, was by plan. Our God knows what he's doing and he knows how to fulfill the plan. Verse 10 goes on, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants, that's us, and all those who will come. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. Listen, Jesus would come. The good plan of God would happen. He would bear the sin of the world. He would receive the stripes. He would be crushed for our rebellion. He would receive stripes that we might be healed because the plan of God was to redeem us, to fulfill this plan. The cost was high, but Jesus came and he willingly fulfilled the plan. Oh, our Lord is good. Repeatedly that night, he declared, as it is written, that it may be fulfilled because he knew he came for this purpose. Oh, God is good. In closing, let's look at these last few prophetic scriptures from Isaiah, verse 11. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death he was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. Oh, let me tell you, this is the day that Jesus, oh, he fulfilled it. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was counted as a rebel. But the truth is, we humans are the rebellious ones. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. But Jesus chose to come and redeem us. I want to encourage you today. There's so much in the scriptures waiting for you. The Holy Spirit, Jesus died that day. He was buried, as we know, and we'll celebrate Sunday, the resurrection. But the reality is he is alive today. He is seated on the throne, making intercession for you. And his desire is to teach you, to show you, to reveal himself to you. So my well, final words to you this day 
is let the Lord walk you through the scriptures so that you would receive all that the lamb purchased for you. He wants to wash you, cleanse you, and deliver you and cause you to inherit what he paid for. Hello everyone, Jerry and Kimberly here. And let me tell you, this is a huge week. This sure is, is Good Friday, healing and communion service, and also all of our Easter services. We not only want you to come, but maybe as importantly, invite other people. Wouldn't it be amazing if all of us had one or two people join the services and be healed and be touched by the love of God? If you'll go to our website, go to therock.com, go to therock.com and click on Easter invite card. That'll give you the ability to send that out and to invite some people. Please help us to do that so that we can invite people to come to all of these services. You know, don't be afraid to invite people that don't normally come to church That's or right. that have even been distant or uh, not open to the Lord because yes. God is softening hearts and there are great things happening in our nation even in the midst of these difficult times. Yes. So send that invite and let's pray that this Easter there's the greatest harvest of souls ever. We'll see you then.